Hey, how's it going? This is going to be a build video for the Ruffian. Just ignore this upper half of the screen. It's a uh, test fitting for a customer right now. We're going to be working in this lower section. Um, first thing I think that I like to do is clear up some of these pins. These are what act as the support in addition to the main three rods. So I just start fitting these into different parts of the main body. You can do this by just grabbing them, taking your pliers, and just give them a little set in there. Uh, this is the only piece that uses uh, a different set of pins other than the bag that you're going to get, which will have a bunch of roughly two centimeter pins. They're about 1.8. This one uses these two long ones and these slide all the way through this one and then this will fit right into here if you can get them lined up and this should be a pretty clean fit those will seat right into each other Then we can take the pins and put them in the back. And this is where the catch is going to go. You can tell which one it is by the fact that it has a notch taken out of the bottom, opposite of the rails. And then on your kits, You'll notice that one side has slightly more of a table in front of the rail, and that is going to be the back end. So you want to put the pins into the front. Then there's also going to need pins in the back of the magwell you can put those in right now if you really want to it's kind of up to you um, we're going to be playing around with this so if you don't want to put them in right away you just have those four pins but it's just nice to get the big pile cleaned up just a little bit and don't get them confused with this slightly shorter pin which is going to be for your magwell catch because it's a little bit skinnier than the rest of the blaster. And here you're just going to take your two four millimeter, you're going to have three in the little bag that comes with it. You have three four millimeter screws and one six. And you're just going to take one of the fours. It has a two millimeter um, Allen key head. So you're going to need, in order to put the blaster entirely together, a two millimeter Allen key and a, I believe, two and a half millimeter. I will double check and make sure that those are correct when I put the video up and edit it. And I'll put it on the screen. All right, so now you have one of these screws in, just get it out of the way. Take your spring, and I attach it to the catch with the, another four millimeter one. And just screw right in, nice and easy. And then you're also going to screw the other end of it using the 6 mil screw into the magwell itself. You'll see some dirt on this one. That's just because I took apart another working blaster to make this video. So yours won't have any grease and grime on it because you printed it at home. Um, and the build kits will have maybe some. That just comes from testing the parts and making sure they all fit because 
I'm going to make sure that I clean everything and I want to ship you guys the best possible products. So you're going to see that some of it's going to have wear and some markings and some light sanding just because I want to make sure that it all fits, which I, I was doing with this one. Alright, so now that you have the catch, oops, your catch is in the magwell, but it's not pinned. Just line up the hole in here. You'll kind of find it, and then just drop that pin and just kind of set it in there. Now, take your last little four millimeter screw. Make sure that you have your Allen key working. And just set it so it's tight. Not overly tightened, just tight. And if you see the screw, the spring is a little bit loose or twisted to the side, you might have over tightened it. So just back it off ever so slightly to get a nice aesthetically centered. It really makes no difference, but it just looks nice this way. And then now that you have the piece put together. Feel free to add your pins now that we're not going to be working with it so much. And that is the magwell. Alright, next you can put together the grip and there's going to be a sheath that comes with it. This doesn't go on until after you put it together because we have to get to the insides of it. So start just like we did with the magwell setting one of the screws the four millimeters just set it on the side like that just so that it's snug same thing again I'm doing half of it nice and snug Alright, then take your trigger, and you're going to have a trigger side and the inside, and you can kind of tell which is what. This is the trigger, and this is your catch, or your internal. Right, so it goes in like this, and then just like before, kind of line up the hole from the outside, oops, line up the hole from the outside, get it nice and close. And then just really kind of take your time until it drops in. Now, put the other side in. And that keeps the trigger nicely in place. All right, now we're going to put together the plunger catch. You're going to have two 6mm screws and a spring. Just take your spring, oops, take your spring, and I like to put the screw on the whole assembly together first. gives you a nice attach point and just like before if it's too tight or too loose just adjust it you don't want to make it going too much to the side you want it to be centered but also to be able to move just a little bit so that when you're setting it it's not too much of a pain because this next part is you're going to take it and you're going to come into the middle it's kind of funky kind of finicky but there's a little bit of an empty space in there that you'll see from the top and you're just going to slide the spring into it and then you should be able to see the spring as you tilt the handle or the catch you should be able to see the spring inside this little ring so with one hand you're going to hold it in place you're going to do your best to and then you're going to take your screw you're going to set it on top of your Allen wrench 
or whatever tool you're using to screw it in. If you have a magnetic one, that works way better, but I don't. So then you turn it sideways and just kind of carefully, make sure it doesn't fall off, carefully set the hole, the screw through the hole in the spring. Oh my god. Get a set of magnetic Allen keys. It'll make your life a thousand times better. Well, we can make this into a time lapse and watch me just struggle over and over to get this thing set. Oh my god. I'm just going to take it off camera for a second. Once you get the spring putting tension on it, it will stay on the Allen key a lot better. So just try not to get too frustrated like I did, otherwise it'll keep falling off. Get it settled. Give it a look over and make sure that you have it set nicely. Mine's not quite all the way in. There we go, I overdid it just a little bit. That's fine. Alright, now, just like we did with the trigger and the catch, line up the holes from looking through it, if you can find them, and then just drop your pin in. Now you're going to put a little bit of tension on the, the trigger forward, and you're going to be able to lift the arm up. Let's actually put this together before we ruin it. Settled. So now the trigger is going to be loose and this is going to be stuck behind it. So just just gently, just so that it has enough to slide forward. Because when you put the plunger tube in, it'll press it down. But now you should have a nice contact right between those two. As long as you don't snap it back, they should be locked. Alright. Cool. Uh, next, let's put the pump grip together. And we're going to do this one before we do the pusher head because uh, this is, has potential to have the worm nuts go through it. And we want to make sure that we know just how far they thread it through. So when you get your kits, these will say pump right and pump left. And that's if you're holding it and you're looking at the back end. This is going to be on your right side, pump right, and pump left is going to be on your left, and the writing is going to be facing outwards. So I slide that in, you'll see if the holes line up. The holes line up. You're going to take wherever I hid them, your sets of warm nuts with your, I believe it's 1.5, might be 2 millimeter allen key and then get them settled and screw them in. Make sure the holes are lined up so you're not just screwing into the aluminum.
So as you screw it in, you'll get tension in the aluminum. And you just want to make sure that when you look down the insides of it, you can't see the screws sticking into here because this is going to slide along the barrel like this. And while it won't affect the shooting of the gun, it'll add friction and it'll scrape up the outside of your barrel. So then now that you have the front two in, you have another set of worm nuts. And those, just like before, screw in. Hey, print's done. All right, again, now that those are in, just make sure you haven't gone through and you're not in the um, path of the barrel. And that's the pump grip. Now we can start putting the front of the gun together. You're going to have these two front pieces. One's going to be thinner and one's going to be thicker. Find the one that has a small divot in the back side. So you'll be able to see it a lot better, but there's going to be a small divot. It's the skinnier side of it or the shorter side. It's at an angle. And the barrel has a flare to it. I don't know if you can see this. So that's going to be, those two parts are going to line up with each other. And now when they go in, the small divot will catch the flare and they should sit perfectly flush. Okay, I'm just putting the parts together right now. Um, we're going to jump a little bit to these just so we can get them through. So take your self-locking nuts, All right, you have three of them, and now with the shorter side or the thinner side, you're just going to pop these into the holes Oops. that are in the back of it with the uh, locking side facing into it so that you have, oops, so it's not this side but the other one. Just because that'll make setting them a lot easier. So just take your rods and you're going to thread them all the way up to the front of this piece. You'll see I'm just barely coming up to the edge. You don't want to overdo it, uh, otherwise you might stab yourself in the hand. But they are a little bit longer that way as new parts come out or if you want to make adjustments or whatever reasoning you decide you want to change up your blaster. Um, you will be able to adjust it if you want to make a longer plunger tube or put a bigger spring in it or whatever. You won't be limited by the length of your support rods. And if you're having trouble, like this one's giving me a little bit of work, you can just take a pair of pliers. Nothing's going to be threaded along these. So just grab a pair of pliers, grab them somewhere in the middle, and just work past those tough points. Perfect. Now we have the screw set to the right depth. We're just going to pop them all out. And now we're going to jump again to this piece, which is the sheath. This adds support to the barrel and protects it from getting dinged up. So I have it marked at the back. All the kits are going to have it marked. And that's just the back of it. That just sits right in there. And then you're going to take these worm nuts 
and you're using an allen key I guess specifically an allen key or a very long one I don't have a long tool piece but an allen key just to get it seated all the way in there and again all these parts are going to come bag in bags or not bags at home in little paper folded things I'm using paper to package everything because I want it to be recyclable. I don't want to use a lot of plastic, you know? I want you to be able to easily recycle everything and not have to deal with a bunch of unusable trash, basically. Alrighty. So those go in, and then these rods are going to act as almost like insurance to make sure that it, they don't pop out, because those seal in past those holes. Alrighty, take your barrel, section we just did. And there will be support rods in here if you decide you want to add more support to the front of the gun. Um, I mean, I don't. There's no point. It barely moves. And you have a barrel and three rods all within about two inches of each other. Because once it's in, you're getting almost zero flex in this part. Alright, now... This one I do add the rods just because there's a little bit less support and this is where the barrel actually attaches to the front of the gun and I do want this part to be very very well supported. So you slide this in, make sure that it seats properly, ow, don't stab yourself in the hand. If you're having trouble like I am, you just take it to the edge of the table and gently give it a little tap. Or if you have a mallet, just gently tap it in. going to pull this piece out and just set these separately because for whatever reason they did not want to set properly. Alright. That's the bottom right one. Front of the gun just about fully assembled and you just want to make sure that those rods are not sticking out the front all right all right next we can take the pump that we assembled just before and line them up with slot in the front and that should slide through pretty easily if you're noticing any friction you probably have something twisted up um, I mean not any friction but you can notice any heavy friction all the parts are designed to have extra tolerances so that it should smooth just about as unburdened as it can all right now take your barrel ring 
That's going to slide over the front. And this is just the last little piece of support. Make sure you don't stab yourself in the hand as you're sliding this on or overshoot it. And get those holes lined up and then just like that. Again, don't over tighten them, you don't want to press into the barrel. Um, this piece will pretty much stay in place. Like, I have yet to have one fall off. They're pretty friction held in place. I just added the worm nuts as a slight help to it, right? So this holds the sheath in place and it holds it attached to the barrel, fixing it at two points and adds a ton of protection. And then when the pump is fully open, the entire barrel, except for the front where the scar barrel is going to attach, is completely sealed in. Right, next, we're going to put together our pusher. This is one of the more um, complex parts. You're going to have a shorter uh, one half inch brass section, and you have these two printed parts. These three screws, two warm nuts. All right. So where the deeper holes are, where these things can set into, that is going to be the back. This is going to be, or I guess technically the front. And this is going to face, just like the barrel, there's going to be a notch on the opposite side of these two deep holes. And the pusher also has a flared lip at one end. These two are going to seat into each other, just like that. And then, as long as they're flush, you know you did it right. Also, the holes are going to line up this way better. Now you get the holes lined up. And if you need to save yourself some time, so you don't have this tool, anything to screw them in really easily, uh, what I like to do is to definitely put the screws in first. And maybe try to um, rip the threads on this piece only really gently take your time you know you can take out a, a file if you have it and just make it so you can push it through that way this won't be acting against you as you try to screw it in so just back off your screws a little bit because you don't want them pushing out you want to barely 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 see the head of them just so that you can line them up with the print. As you're screwing it in, if you don't want to look or if you find it awkward to look, just put your finger over it. I wouldn't do this if you use no drill, but just put your finger over it if you're doing it by hand and wait till you feel it just kissing your finger so you feel the nub sticking out. And doing this ahead of putting the brass in will save you a bunch of time because if you just have a single non-twisting short allen key um, working around the brass is kind of a pain because you have to twist it three quarters of a turn at a time and it doesn't take long it takes me maybe about five ten minutes you know, just put some music on and it goes pretty quick. Because once you're done, you're done. And then just get the holes lined up. And you, you leave the little nubs sticking out just so you can feel them and you'll know they're set. And then just take this and screw it into the site. Then 
I mean, you'll give it a little tug and you'll notice there's no slop in it. And that's how you know this is together. And then take your O-rings. You're going to have two red ones. These are silicone O-rings. Uh, the lubricant I'm sending is Syncolin, so it's not going to degrade them. Um, but just as a heads up, if you do put in a um, replacement lubricant down the line, just be warned that these are um, silicone and you will need something that will not deteriorate them. Take your plunger and just while we're putting O-rings on, we slide the black one over it. Alright, now we can take this and this will feed slightly into the hole. Just grab the pusher and push it in, or the pump, push it in because this is this, oops, this area is one part. Right through there. Take your, your worm nuts, just like before. And we're going to screw them in. And these are very important that you get underneath the level of this. Uh, one, because if you're not, that means you haven't gone deep enough to get a good grip into the aluminum. And um, also because if you don't, you will tear up the inside of your plunger too. That was a mistake I made early on, and no sense in you guys doing it. So make sure they're seated well, you don't want them slipping out. And the aluminum will hold them. Once they're in, I haven't had any actually slip out. It was just early mistakes. Good. It's all settled. Perfect. Oh, wait, not perfect. I forgot a part. So, luckily the hard part for the pusher is already done. So just take them out. We just pull them out. Doesn't even have to be all the way, just make sure they're out of the aluminum. You gotta make sure that this goes on. Okay, so this is the plunger tube attach point. And that'll slide right on there. Nice and clean. Alright, quickly redo that. So I like to slide it into the inside first. And then push it back through. That is so much better. All right. Now that we have all those parts in, that should be working just fine. Uh, your kits will come with little tubes of lubricant, and your plunger tube is going to have one side with these tiny holes in it. I don't know if you can see them on the camera. You'll be able to see them in person. There'll be two little holes right there and right there. This is the back side. So we're going to take the front side, and we're going to take some of the lube, and getting the proper amount in there to get the, uh, to start maxing out that performance, just kind of, it's going to depend on your region and, you know, how much you've used it. The first lubricant, I like to put in a good amount just to really coat the entire barrel. To the back side. I just 
you know, make a mess. It's gonna get all of your finger. And then also put some on the uh, back ring of the pusher because as you slide it in, it's going to fit super snugly and basically it'll push any lubricant, not any, but it'll push the lubricant away from the um, plunger tube because the first ring will catch it. So you just want to make sure both rings have a good seal. And wipe off anything you got in your hands. All right, make sure you put it in the right way. So look for those two little holes. Those are going to be facing the back of the gun blaster. And I'll slide on just like that. Then this will fit right into that. And that's nice and set. All right, next we're going to take this piece that we have put together and just start sliding support rods right through. Uh, if the rods are in, it should go together pretty smoothly. This piece can sometimes be a little bit tight, so just sanding it down and um, boy, sanding it down should, there we go, allow it to move pretty easily. Fix your trigger before it goes all the way on. like that. All right. Now take your top rail, slide that on. Now take this back attach piece, put it in there. Make sure you don't forget the support rods like I do. Sometimes they slip out, you know, just make sure that everything's all in there. If you have us, you'll have extra support rods lying around. So if you drop one or lose one somehow, it shouldn't be that hard to pop a new one in. I'll take your plunger tube, and in addition to the highly viscous one, I take a slightly less viscous, and I'll also put this in your kit. And I just kind of do a light dab around the ring just to kind of decrease the amount of friction it's facing. Trigger pull and ow, don't stab yourself. Slide it in. Yeah, that'll cut like that. Take the back end of your plunger tube, put that on. Uh, this outer of this back ring. This one just like that. Nice and easy. Press it all together. Take your spring, I'm using a K26 in this case. Drop that in there. And then, this is the back end. Uh, I already put the screw in here. It's optional. I think it adds a little more support to this rod. Uh, just make sure it's seated past the quick release or quick detach holds in the back. And then I put this, I just brace it with my leg. Um, if you have a belt, press it against your belt, uh, or put the um, scar barrel on the front, and that'll prevent you from hurting yourself. Or if you have a table, I mean, just I'm doing it for the sake of the video, putting it against my leg. But the best way to do it is to press it against the table. So just take these wing nuts and pop all three of them on. This way you can really easily adjust the tension in the blaster. Just make sure that it's nice and aligned. You don't want to be too tight. Uh, you'll start hearing some creaking and it'll settle just normally. And you can just give it a little bit of twist in the back, but for the most part, you just want to get them so that they don't just spin freely. And then you're going to take your stock um, and you're going to have this little piece 
and it'll slide in. And then take your Allen key or whatever tools you're using. If you have a screwdriver that you like more, whatever has a better grip, just take it and just push it in. And here's your little cotter pin. Make sure that it is going all the way in and that it is at a uh, perfectly horizontal angle. Then, if these are all at roughly 45 and this one's going to be uh, flat, pops on, little pin, just give it a little squeeze, slides in, and that it's not coming off. Uh, my rods are sticking out just a little bit because this is my prototype gun that I just kind of play around with and do build videos with. Take a sheath, put it on. Uh, the kits will come with screws. I think these are one and a half millimeter screws. They're very small. Uh, I haven't needed them, but if you're worried about the sheath falling off, go ahead and put one on. Take your barrel and slide that in the front. And that's how you build the ruffian.